Hey guys, Laura here with STP. Summer is an amazing time to prep for the SAT. You don't have the demands of school and tests and homework to worry about. So in this video, I am going to give you the ultimate summer prep plan so that you can conquer the SAT by the August test. And all of my tips are backed by empirical research, so I will put the research articles I am citing down in the description below. Now, before we get started, it's my mission to be able to reach as many students as possible from all corners of the globe. So you will definitely help me out in supporting this channel if you smash the subscribe button and notification bell below. I don't want you to miss out on free content for me anyways to help you master the SAT. All right, guys, my first summer prep tip is to take a full length ACT. I know, I know you might not feel like taking a three and a half hour test, but I promise you it will be to your benefit because if you already have a 500 foot head start in a race, wouldn't you take it? So you might be prepping for the SAT already and you might notice that your score has plateaued or isn't changing. The ACT might be a better test that plays to your skill set. So I will link a free practice ACT below. Sit down and take it and, and try to mimic like real testing conditions. Time it, be in a quiet place, use a pencil only, have a calculator. So then you can take your ACT score and compare it to your SAT score with a concordance table. So whatever test you're higher in, um, I would say rule of thumb, if you're 50 points or more higher in one, that's the one you should pursue and prep for this summer. If you're within 50 points and their scores are very close to each other, then it's gonna be more of a qualitative analysis where you have to pick the test that you feel more comfortable with. All right, tip number two for your summer prep plan. You're going to want to target your weaknesses, so you need to perform a detailed opportunity analysis once you drill down on what tests you're gonna take. So let's just say you're going the SAT route. What you're gonna to wanna to do is every single practice SAT you've already done in Blue Book exams, you're going to want to go through all of your misses and categorize them. So I have a free progress test tracker for both the math and the English. I will link those below so that you can use those. Here at SCP, we actually have an even more sophisticated Excel spreadsheet that our tutors and I use in order to assess a student's performance and target weaknesses. Now that's not something that I can share, but if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one tutoring or taking a class with us or signing up for a self-paced course, then you'll have an opportunity to use that Excel spreadsheet. So I will link up here to our website so you can check out all the services we have and you know book a consultation if need be. But anyways, you wanna work smart and not hard this summer. So if you're really good at linear equations, don't practice linear equations questions. You're already getting all those right. So when you do this detailed analysis, you really are going to see what your lowest success rate categories are and then hone in on those and work on mastering those. Sometimes it might just be the way College Board asks the questions. They throw curveballs and they add little nuances in. So you might be surprised to see that you're weak on, you know, systems of equations, but it's really maybe because you're not understanding what they're asking for or you're misreading the question or something. So it's time to get to know what College Board is doing on those questions you're getting wrong so that you can do it differently next time. All right, tip number three is to choose at least three days a week to practice. So there was a study done by Capetta and other researchers in 2006 that showed that distributed practice is more effective than cramming. And I know a lot of you guys out there love to cram, but hear me out, that is not the way you wanna go about this, okay? So if you can drill down on three days a week that work for you, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Schedule out a block of time, at least two hours. So let's say you decide 10 a.m. to noon is gonna work for you Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What I want you guys to do is I want you to really commit to that. Stick to the plan, like literally take out your phone, put it in your calendar, act like it's a real appointment with a tutor, and you're gonna sit down those days and you're gonna prep. 
Now, obviously, the more days that you distribute out, the better. So if you can commit to it like an hour of daily practice, that's fantastic. But I know you guys have lives and other things going on. So at minimum, try to commit to three days of SAT practice a week. All right, tip number four, what I want you to do is engage in interleaved practice. So there was a study in 2007 that found that if you mix in different types of questions when you're studying, that's more effective than just practicing one type of question the entire time. So there's a couple ways you can go about this. You can, in your two hour block, do one hour of math and then one hour of English. Or if you're just focused on half of the test to super score, you need to pinpoint maybe two or three week areas and split up your session so that you're doing you know, a little bit from each category. So when you're using this interleave practice strategy, I would recommend utilizing College Board's question bank because once you've pinpointed your weaknesses, you can filter down to those specific categories and types of questions and pull a question set based on your level of difficulty that you need. So there's something guys called the zone of proximal development, which is essentially the zone that you're in where you can tackle the questions, but they're still challenging. So if you're already scoring a 600 on math, don't do the easy questions. That's before your zone of proximal development. You wanna do the mediums and you wanna stretch yourself by doing the hards. All right, tip number five. You wanna take a full length practice test every two weeks. So after you've worked on the drills and you have mastered those certain areas of weakness, take a full length practice test because a study in 2011 showed that full practice tests improve memory retention and test performance which is kind of a no brainer. So I think it goes along with the interleave practice too. When you take a full length practice test, not only can you work on your pacing, but you are thrown all different types of questions randomly, which really keeps you on your toes and allows your brain to continue to switch gears and make adjustments, which is something you've got to do in the real thing. Now, every time you take a new full length practice, you're going to want to go back through your misses and throw them into your test tracker or whatever spreadsheet you're using to monitor your data because you might uncover new weaknesses in the process. All right, guys, if you're finding this video helpful so far, show me some love, hit the like button below. All right, tip number six is to reflect on your practices. So a study by Hattie and other researchers in 2008 found that reflecting on your practice is critical to improvement. And I also think that this is common sense and a no brainer, but you would be surprised how many students I work with who finish a practice and then never look at it again. Listen guys, when you finish a full length test or a drill or whatever it is that you're doing and you mark which questions you got wrong, I want you to go back to those questions without looking at the right answer and I want you to try again. This gets the wheels turning, it gets you thinking about the question again, you're looking critically for maybe where you went wrong and why the right answer is right. So you want to actively think about it first, because when you're processing it that way, it's easier to retain it. And if you can construct your own ideas of why the right answer is right, that goes along with the constructivist theory. It just really helps you at the end of the day to remember things and to do well. Um, so that would be definitely my suggestion first. Now, if you answer a second time and then you still get it wrong, well, that's when you need to go to the answer explanation or go seek out resources, like look for a YouTube uh, video walkthrough of that test or whatever it is that will help you understand why you're wrong, why the other answer is right. Make sure to keep track and tag the ones that you missed and save them for later because you're gonna to wanna to go back to those questions later on before you take your next test and revisit them and review them again. Otherwise, if you're not reflecting and doing this process, history is bound to repeat itself and your score isn't gonna change. All right, tip number seven is to use metacognition. So metacognitive strategies, they've been trending, I guess, since the 90s. A study in 94 came out and showed how critical these are to the learning process. But anyways, metacognition is basically thinking about your own thinking. 
So when you're taking practices, picture yourself floating up above yourself, watching you do the practice. You're basically the thinker behind the thinker. So you want to notice things like, oh, you know, Laura, you're rushing right now, or, you know, you're going too slow. You need to pick up the pace or, oh shoot, you're not writing down your work. You might make a careless mistake. That internal voice that you have that's monitoring how you're thinking, like you might even be an overthinker where you can recognize, oh shoot, I'm overthinking this question right now. That'll keep you on track. It's almost like you're coaching yourself and reeling yourself back in so that you can maximize your efficiency and your success rate. So what I want you guys to do is practice using metacognition now because you wanna build these good test taking habits so that they'll come naturally to you when you're in the real test. All right, tip number eight. I want you guys to go find someone and tutor someone else on the SAT. There was a study in 2013 that showed elaborative interrogation, which basically means explaining why something is true deepens your understanding of the concepts. So if you can find like someone beyond a study buddy, maybe somebody who's not at the same level as you on the SAT or is just getting started on the SAT and you can help them get better and tutor them, it's going to make you even better than you were before. I have to say in my own SAT sessions with my students, I often have my students explain things back to me because I know how important the strategy is. It really does make a difference. All right, guys, this next tip might be hard for some of you guys, but I really, really need you to work on this this summer, okay? Tip number nine is to eat right and get adequate sleep. Guys, self-care goes a long way. There was a study in 2008 by Benton and other researchers that showed that if you practice this self-care, it really does help with cognitive functioning, meaning you can be more on top of your A game when you're thinking through problems. And I think that that's kind of obvious. You know, if, you're, if your tank is low and you're running on fumes, there's no way you're going to be able to, you know, um, produce and um, perform at 110%. So start working on getting more sleep. If you get less than six hours a night, you really need to be getting more sleep than that. So I want you guys to go to bed a little earlier, get up a little bit earlier, especially when you get like two weeks out from the test, you're really gonna wanna start to change your sleep patterns and start to get up earlier every day so that when you have to get up at seven in the morning to get to that test, you're gonna feel fully functional and ready to go. And obviously, the better you eat, the better you're gonna feel too. So if you are hitting up Taco Bell every day, you might wanna consider doing something differently. No offense, Taco Bell. All right, tip number 10. You're gonna wanna make sure you sign up for the August SAT ASAP. No, guys, I know that this isn't a study tip, but the August SAT notoriously runs out of seats at the test centers. This is because it's a summer test. A lot of the school buildings are closed and don't want to host. So if you haven't signed up for August yet, do it like right after you're done watching this video. All right, guys, that's it for my summer prep plan. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and comment below prep plan. So I'll know you made it all the way to the end, which I really appreciate. And until next time, guys, happy prepping.